Welcome to the Village Idiots Podcast. I am your Dungeon Master, Nathan. With me this evening, I have Nicole. What's up? Jordan. Hey. Emily. Hello. And Justin. Hey, yo. We are a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast. At the end of every episode, we choose a village idiot who has to do the recap next episode. And last week's village idiot was... Emily! Yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Emily, what happened last week? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> you had just opened a door after knocking out two copper mantles... Or, sorry, three copper mantles, and you saw a bunch more copper mantles in the courtyard. Sure, sure. that sounds like something you would you would do <laughs> to us. You all did it to yourselves. If you'll remember the previous episode, you all were the village idiot because you didn't ask the copper mantles how many were in their number. I'm assuming we developed some dope-ass plan to sneak past them. Dope-ass is generous. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I remember we were arguing about it, if Sounds I'm like remembering us. correctly. After Drew, in true cartoon fashion, closed the door, I think Scar's plan went out. Yeah. I don't remember what it was, but <laughs> yeah, I think so. No, we. I think we snuck out. Like, we were. We all rolled. Oh, that's right. I used stealthy. face step. I used face step and I just got out of. I left. Yeah. And then you guys snuck through the courtyard. That's what it was. Through the stalls. After using your thaumaturgy. And thaumaturgy was used, and the guards ran away towards the thing. And yeah. then we ran and found Fira, or the place we're supposed to meet Fira, which was in a tavern. And got. Drunk and before. we started drinking. <laughs> That's why I was the village idiot, because I decided we start drinking. The prickly boar in. The prickly boar. That's right. <laughs> I suggested we start drinking at whatever o'clock in the morning. And that was why I was the village idiot. Pretty much dawn. <laughs> Fear comes downstairs. We're plastered. Uh, we eventually get to the boat. Did we yeah. make it to the boat? We did. And we were unloading supplies or loading supplies onto the boat. We met some of my old crew. That's right. Yeah. Bonus points for whoever can uh, remember the three crew members' names. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Jeff. Jeff uh -huh. the dwarf. Hefe. <laughs> Erg the orc. And that's not fair. You just listened to the episode like literally last night. And Ron Weasley, the human. Oh, uh, I did make that joke. That was Ruckle. Funny. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it was Ur. Yeah. Jeff Ruckle and Ur. Sounds like a great crew. <laughs> More bonus points if you can tell me Ur's full name. Is it Erroneous? <laughs> Irving? Ergonomics? <laughs> Sorry, I said that backwards. Ur is his full name, his nickname, which in orc culture on Lanamora is longer than the quote <laughs> oh, full yeah, name. I remember that now. I do remember that. It was Urumdrum. That's right. Anyway, uh, we're on the um, ship, and then I feel like something was going on, and Nathan was trying to say ship terms yep. that weren't correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping he's done slightly more ship research <laughs> before this episode. Spoiler alert, no. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. So we were on a part of the ship, and part of it was, I think the sail bit was ripping or wouldn't come down. It was something with the sail bit. And then uh, it's gone. It's all fuzzy. There was a, after we loaded the stuff onto the ship and we were about ready to take off, cast off, how, whatever the correct nautical term is. If there's any nautical buffs listening, I apologize. Kick off. I think it's casts <laughs> off, but. Uh, cast the, away. Uh, ca with Tom Hanks. Cast away. I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> well said. Um, then there was an arrow. That lodged into the mast. Oh, right. Something with the mast. See, I was right. The sail thing. <laughs> the sail thing. <laughs> Something with the sail thing. Arrow in the mast. <laughs> Come on. And that's where we ended. And the ship is the Mayfly. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And I was like, they don't live very long. <laughs> this is not a good... It's a, it's a schooner. But I thought it was really clever that he named it after a, a water bug. On you. Probably should be after like a resilient water bug. <laughs> I think it's a cute name. It is. I'm the mayfly. Anyway, 
So yeah, a crossbow bolt has just struck the mast of the mayfly. I guess, and look at what who shot it. You see... There are a few copper mantles coming your way, and they've got crossbows. Sounds about right. We should uh, leave now. I'm wondering how they knew that we were going to be on this ship. I think Fira sold us out. That's Scar's first thought. <laughs> I don't know when she would have time. We've been with her since she literally woke up. No, she walked downstairs and be- was like, holy shit. Before that, she probably was like, yeah, I tricked them into thinking that they could come on my boat but I know that they're wanted and I want that money. If anything, there would have been copper mantles already on the boat then. That's like, there's like a way easier way to do that. Yeah, the betrayal. This is a complicated way to not seem like you're betraying. So. <laughs> also, her boat just got hurt. We can also <laughs> literally just ask her, are we going to sh- are we gonna cast off now? Can we do that? And depending on her response, I guess we're going to find out whether or not she sold us out. I like the idea of Scar whipping around and being like, did you sell us out? <laughs> so I feel like that would be the first thing Scar would do. It would Agamir be. Agamir raises his head and bellows to the rest of the crew, we're under fire. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Drew is like throwing stuff on the boat. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Aren't we on it? You're, you're on it. We're No, we were reloading it. Oh, that's right. Uh, Jeff the dwarf looks up and says, I don't see any fire. God. <laughs> I hate Jeff. <laughs> He's very literal. <laughs> Jeff, how many? We've been over this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I forget the voice I did for him. You're right. This is it now. Um, uh, <laughs> Fira, we've got to go. He bellows at Fira and Fira says, go, 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 go. Cast off. I'm going to like sidle up to the edge of the boat and fire some suppression, some some covering fire, some shoot some arrows. Wait, never mind. I don't yeah, think you I, don't have a crossbow, do you? I don't have a freaking crossbow. Ah, okay. use your whip. Just whip him. Just whip him back. <laughs> <laughs> Can I roll to whip arrows out of the air? Uh, you know what? Sure. Oh my god! Please let this be. A you thing. just have to ask. <laughs> this is great. Let's see. Um. I feel like, you know what, sure is a better response than you could try. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, seven. Wait, where are all, like, us? Are we on the dock? You're, you have now gotten on the boat. Oh, okay. How many of his own crew does he whip with a seven? <laughs> <laughs> uh, un- he's unsure of the Akamiris. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me, my brain's broke. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that was just such a, that was a thing. This has got to be do. the most disjointed start that we've had in a while. Yes, it's great. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Agamir uh, is um, unfamiliar with this whip as this is the first time that he has used it. It's a little bit longer than his old whip, so he's not quite as proficient with it. He doesn't hit anyone, but the he goes to crack the whip and it doesn't make the the little sonic boom sound and it just kind of whips into the water and just smacks the top of it Mm -hmm. is wet now you got a wet whip kid it's wet now a wet noodle (laughs) it's like oh god the copper mantles are getting closer oh no let's go so the arrow embedded as soon as we cast off right so like we're moving you are starting to move yes okay in the like the bridge is up the drawbridge or whatever you would call it the gangplank gangplank <laughs> i'm the worst y'all i forgot i have magic <laughs> you have ranged spells yes exclusively. <laughs> That's all. it's all exclusively what i have and i'm sitting here like oh no what are we gonna do <laughs> i thought you had to, uh I, well no not exclusively because you have the the touch one yeah, she does have inflict wounds. You're right. You're right. I'll never forget about inflict wounds. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I was supposed to get paid by that guy. Oh, my God. Okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Could I possibly cast Shield of Faith? It's supposed to be, like, on a creature. Can I cast it, like, on a ship? <laughs> no. You let Agamir whip, whip arrows out of the air. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so funny. I'm sorry. I, I wanted I like, like Violet in uh, The Incredibles. Just make the little thing bigger. 
Yes, I love that so much. I let Agamir attempt to whip <laughs> arrows out of the air. <laughs> okay, how many guards are there? Like, how many people are attacking us right now? You see three guards. Yeah, just let them try. We're casting off. I wave bye to them. Yeah, let's go. I mean, we're going, but they're still, like, trying to hit us with arrows, are they not? They are still trying to hit you with the crossbow bolts. They have seen you. It stands to reason they know which ship you are on because they, yeah, they, the name is painted on the back of the ship. Ah, fuck me. I forgot about that. Now we have to kill them somehow. Well, they opened fire before seeing us, presumably. Or they knew that we were... They saw us, therefore they opened fire. Yeah, that's... They weren't that far away from where you, you were. They must have spotted us when we were heading for the boat. Or someone must have spotted us and tipped them off if it wasn't Fira. So we have to kill them. We can't let them, like, it's just, it has to happen. We can't let them go running off and telling anybody else where we got, what ship we got on. Because then we're going to, this ship is going to be yeah, this, wanted. This, they, this, they may not be able to dock, the Mayfly may not be able to dock in port here again. Or anywhere for that matter, because they'll put the word out. Their jurisdiction ends uh, in fellows. But I mean, like, they could they could put the word out to other districts saying, like, there's wanted criminals on this particular boat. Look out for them. Like an APB kind of thing. Okay, so what's my, what's the play here? Like, am I trying to kill these dudes? Well, can I swim? What? No! Can Scarlet swim? I don't That's know. That's what I'm, I'm asking. Can I? Is that do not I jump do? off of this boat. <laughs> in your armor? Probably not. Split the party. No, I was gonna... Jumps into the water. Well, we're not that far away from the dock yet. We can't be. You're a few dozen feet, maybe. How? Are there, wep- are there weapons on the ship? I don't know what you know about boats, but it takes a hell of a lot longer to actually get that far away from the dock. You've, you've shoved off and you're like 24 feet away from That's the dock. That's impossible. It's a big boat. It's got it's big sails. Not- it's not fun. You can't put the this sails up. This is a fantasy until... world. It's fantasy water, no. fantasy boat, fantasy no. sail. Done. It's a magic first, boat. It's a magic first, boat. First of all, you can't put the sails up until you get out into open water. That's not a thing. Fantasy like, boat. It's. <laughs> Second of all, it doesn't work like that. You have to follow the do- along the dock to get out. Docks don't. They don't work that way. Fantasy boat. Ah. Fantasy dock. <laughs> All right, well, how the fuck are we going to kill these guys then? Because we got to Maybe we just hide and, like, let them shoot their little arrows into the wood. They already saw us. But I feel like even if they saw, even if they saw us, I don't think that's big. That I don't think that's that big of a deal. Just change the name of the boat. Can't do that. It's a stupid name anyway. Can't change the name of a boat. It's bad luck. Fantasy boat. I was just going to say, please don't say fantasy boat again. <laughs> Are there ballastae on the ship or anything? Is this too lightweight? There are not. Are there any other people on this boat that have weapons that are ranged? I have ranged spells. My question is, am I? are we doing anything at all? Like, why does it matter? Let's just go. I'm done with going. Peace. Peace out. Drew gives the middle finger as we sail away. Yeah, I wave by. Let's sail away. Blow kisses. Yeah, insert sticks here. Come sail away. Come sail away. Okay, Drew gives them the finger. And uh, you all go off into the distance. Great. You have made it to open water wa- rather rapidly because this boat seems to be propelled by some sort of magic. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if the words fantasy boat can utter heard one more time. What a cool boat. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you like that, uh, Agamir? I uh, got some artificers to outfit this with. Uh, they called it a, a motor. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, did you put propellers on this thing? Because, like, that's the only way that that's happening. Motor. Weird. Can I see it? Is it magic or machine? No, no, it's it, it, it's under the water. You see it. Um, yeah. It it gets the water and it pushes the water out and it makes us go faster. Hmm. I might have to take a dip and get a closer look at that when we uh, when we get to port. 
Yeah, maybe. You know, it's uh, it's pretty neat. It's kind of a prototype, so. Well, that couldn't have been cheap. Or do you do you have a friend of a friend? No, you know, it's um, we've been uh, it's been a pretty good good gear ever since we left the uh, the wish. You know, Drew sits down because she doesn't give a shit about boat talk. She doesn't care. She's sitting down making tea. I wasn't even near you. We're all just kind of like drifting away as they start talking shop. We're like, Ugh. <laughs> I'm gonna walk up to the to the bow to the bow of the ship, like all like Titanic, like <laughs> I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. <laughs> Where is the current manifest for the boxes that we brought on? Uh, the you imagine would have that. Yeah, Fira would have it in her quarters. Oh, and as we talked about last time, there aren't really very many quarters but fear it does have the only like room on the boat it's understandable captain's quarters fair gnome yeah understandable big room big room so yeah the uh the the salt spray is hitting your faces the wind is blowing y'all are going i walk up to fear and i ask her i'm like so um how many days do you think until till our next stop well we should be able to Get up to the Mithril Peninsula in about, oh, I don't know, a week or so? All right. Sounds good. We have a week on a boat. We go on a week on a boat. Week on a boat. Anyone pick up any uh, cards or chess sets? Yeah, I did. I think I picked up my a flute and a deck of playing cards, actually. Entertain us, small child. <laughs> I look at you with the... <laughs> I didn't really say that again. <laughs> I want to call you a small child. That's insulting. I'm not that mean. Only my NPCs do that. Nah, mm-hmm. go ahead. Play the flute. Play the flute. Play the flute. Okay. I, uh, I stand with my back to the mast and I kick up one knee and I start playing the flute, looking all cool and shit. All right. Roll me a performance. Cool playing a flute? <laughs> hey, Jethro Tull does it. Ah, Lizzo, Lizzo does, does it, it, actually. Yeah, Lizzo does it. That is cool. Can you twerk? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, against a mast. I'm going to twerk against a mast. Twerk against yep. uh, Jeff the Dwarf. <laughs> That's a three. Uh, actually, no, no, wait. I rolled a one. Haha. <laughs> so I get to roll again. Good use of your lucky trait. Yes, yes. Uh, that's a natural 20. <laughs> Are you, how the hell does that happen? <laughs> natural 20. Nice. So nice. you're uh you give a fantastic rendition of a a jaunty seafaring tune. Uh everyone's kind of surprised that Saf would know this, but uh yeah, you, you belt it out. It's great. What do we need to be doing? Like scrubbing decks? Nah. That kind of stuff. Well, we promise to work. General boat stuff. Yeah, we promised that we would work. I promised that I would work. I did not promise that I would be scrubbing anything. I feel like that's different. Swabbing decks. That's what I was looking for. I will not scrub nor swab. Swabbing the poop deck. (laughs) General boat maintenance. (laughs) Yes, you have to. um, If any of you have any. Special skills. (laughs) Yeah, I know that Agamir's got special skills, so really it's probably going to be Agamir's skills are going to be I'm used. I'm a cleric. How about that? I, I'm the cleric on the boat. I'm healing the people who get, like, rope burn and stuff. I get seasick. Can you help me? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm just Drew is helping seasick. Scar the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Making tea for the seasickness, and I, I'm the doctor on board. Can... Oh, can you read? Can one of the crew members be named Jim so that I can say, "Damn it, Jim! I'm a doctor, not a sailor." <laughs> well, that's a that's a great question. Do you all want to know what the rest of the crew's like? Yeah. How many are there? There, it's a crew of ten, including Fira. Discluding Fira. Is that a word? Yes. I made it up. Fantasy word. Fantasy word. That's funny. Yeah, there are ten crew members other than the four of you and then Fira as well. On the first day, you meet everyone. You've already met Jeff the dwarf, <laughs> uh, Ruckle the human, and Ur the half orc. You also meet another human named Fred. 
He tells you many times it's with two D's. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Still waiting on Jim. There's Hanso, the half elf. Hanso. 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 Yeah. There's another gnome named Lingda. L i n g d a. Yeah, like Linda with a G shoved in there. God, Linda. Linda, listen. <laughs> Linda, 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 listen. You beat me to Sorry. it. <laughs> Linda, Linda, listen. There's Yam, the goblin. Like, like the potato? Yam? Yan. Yan. Oh. There's a Drogon, the dragonborn. Is there really? <laughs> yes. The name is Drogon. Ad Drogon. A D D R O G O N. Oh. Adrogon. Adrogon. And Ivata, the elf. And there is also a deep elf on board named Sane. There's no gym after I specifically requested a gym. <laughs> this is Fira's crew. She does, she does there's not a have a, She does not no have gym. A, Just so you can make one. You know what? It's a fantasy world, Emily. There are no gyms. Uh, I feel like it's fantasy world, so I can make everyone gym if I wanted to. I'm just, just gonna call, call just gym. call Fred Jim. <laughs> yeah, I will actually. <laughs> okay, that's Fred with two D's. Okay, Jim. All right, Jim sounds good. <laughs> Jim with two M's, Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you learn the names of all of the crew members, and they seem pretty cool. They're pretty chill. The whole crew seems like a good time. You know, it's a cargo ship, so it usually goes pretty slow. Because it's usually hauling a lot of cargo and goods, uh, sometimes sensitive materials, and it needs to avoid the rough waters out on the open ocean where they could go a little faster. Uh, so there's a lot of time for them to get to know each other, and it seems like a pretty tight-knit crew. But right now, you all are out on the open ocean, and it's going pretty smoothly. Until... A storm starts a brewing. You are getting tossed all around the water. Things are getting a little choppy, and thunder's happening everywhere. There's lightning striking. You see a water spout or two. I'm gonna get. I wanna like tie myself to the boat and do like what the guy, what Lieutenant Dan does in uh, Forrest Gump. Like, is that the best you got? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so that's what Scar's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fred and Sane get you tied up there. And as they get you tied up, it's just at that moment that a huge wave comes crashing over the Mayfly. <laughs> and the Mayfly capsizes. No fucking way. Come no. on. Oh, I'm tied to the boat. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who said that you wanted to get fantasy tied to the fantasy boat. Ah! Okay, so that's what you get for naming it the Mayfly. Then that's where we're going to end the whole series. The oh. whole everyone dies. And we die at sea. A single door, one of us survives. You all pass out. You're, you know, you're, you're able to find something to float upon. However, it's not looking so great. Y'all kind of are holding on to this piece of flotsam as the, the storm continues going on. and Is this going to be like an episode where we like reenact open water? <laughs> like that yeah. Reenactment of movie. Castaway. <laughs> Look out for the fantasy sharks and the fantasy Is there going to be a fantasy island? Like, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> that one worked. <laughs> no, it's a, um, it's a regular island. Um, so you all... <laughs> The plane, the plane. <laughs> no, it's a regular island. Wait, really? Do we get cast, uh, like, washed ashore on an island? Yeah, you, uh, you are washed ashore. You pass out, and you, you wake up, and it, the storm has passed, and it's a bright, sunshiny day on an island. So we washed up on a desert island. You wash up on an <laughs> island. It, it does not appear to be deserted. However, you see. Lots of ruins on the island. And you see that there are some tufts of smoke coming up from various points on the island. Ooh. 
Do we have our like weapons and stuff on us? Yeah, you've got all your weapons. They were secured to like belts and stuff that you were wearing. To ruin you. <laughs> yeah, no. took away my weapons again. <laughs> yeah, you just got all new weapons. We spent a whole like two episodes shopping, and then I take <laughs> them away and put you on an island where you can't buy new ones. You would do that. Just say it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I'm not. I'm not one of those types of DMs. Not always, but sometimes. <laughs> Whoa. You know what? Scar's weapons are gone. No! <laughs> you already tied me to the boat when it capsized. I'm surprised you let me survive. Uh, I didn't tie you to the boat. Fred and Sane tied you to the boat. But you made it capsize right after it. You got yourself free. They didn't tie you very well. Yeah. It was all for a joke. Um, now I have a question. Yes. Because Agamir is a sailor. Does he have some sort of like ability where he like always knows what direction he's facing or like Does Agamir have some sort of magnet inside of him that just ties into the gross core? No, I just knows? mean like I just <laughs> I can navigate by stars. Um <laughs> too bad it's the daytime. Then I know where the sun rises and sets. Yeah, you can usually tell what time of day it is. Yeah, by, like, you can generally know the where the sun rises and sets. Hey, if he can navigate the stars, the sun is a star, so he'll be able to tell what time it is by position of the sun. Yeah, like we all do. It's in the medieval time. We don't, there's, we don't, there's no clocks. That's how we tell what time it is. It's the sun. I got a sun. I got a, a sundial. A sundial. <laughs> you want to buy a sundial? Can I roll a perception to see if anybody else from the crew washed ashore? Yes, please. That's a nine. Looks like just about everyone's here in your immediate view. Somehow the currents were moving around in such a way that you all landed on this same patch of sand. Any debris, like the uh, cargo? You see various boxes, you know, the flotsam and jetsam from the ship, and you see the main hull of the ship in the distance as well that has washed ashore. Poor Fira. <laughs> I feel really bad. God, I think it's just like a unlucky charm for boats. I'm assuming the motor sank to the bottom <laughs> with the ship. Make me a make me a perception check. Let's see. Since you don't know what a motor looks like. <laughs> Sorry, a motor. I wonder if we're able to figure out what this island where this island is based off of off of our like trajectory and but you said we passed out, so we wouldn't know where the water flowed at us to. That's correct. That sucks. And we have to wait for nighttime for Agamir to tell us where we are. <laughs> do we? <laughs> At least he knows which way north is. Do we know? Do we know of any islands off the coast, like in the direction that we were heading? There are islands off the coast of Ilar's birth, which a day or two out from Fellows is probably where you would have landed. What you're saying is we're we're like off the coast of Ilar's birth on one of these islands, probably. That's like how far we got. So the Grand Harbor is right outside the... It's just south of the entrance to Intepa. The Grand Harbor is the southernmost point of Fellows and almost the southernmost point of Ilari. You would have exited the Grand Harbor south and then went east around the tip of the Circle of All, and then you would have hit a storm to the southeast of the Circle of All and would have washed ashore on... You assume one of the islands off of Ilar's birth. Those, they're the only ones that have any significance. What do we know about them? Roman history. I knew he was going to say Yeah, that. I'll do that too. Yeah, 16. 23. 11. Goodness. Drew doesn't know much about the islands off of Ilar's birth. That's fair. She's been uh, in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Scar knows a little bit, mainly that there are no copper mantle patrols that go out that way. There's really not much out there. Are they actually a part of the like government and all that stuff, though? They are part of Ilar's birth, but they might not. So they're under Ilar's birth's dur jurisdiction, but there's nothing that really needs to that goes on out that way. Gotcha. Maybe there's an, an odd job of rooting out pirates or something like that, but really there's no patrols that run there. Okay. Saf recalls reading something about these islands in the past 
they were one of the first places that artificers would do their crafting away from the mainland of Ilar's birth, so to avoid uh, any accidents or experiments going awry. There you go. Now you can get your now you can get your construct. <laughs> so this is going to be a, a field trip for me. They are called the Bulwark Isles. Cool. So we're on one of those. We are we are currently ashore, just all washed up. You are ashore, all washed up, and your investigation for the the motor. Um, y- you aren't able to tell whether or not the motor is there. That's fine. No. It's all uh, everything's all kind of mangled up. I Agamir would like to get up and check for Fira. Wow, we are all right here. We had different interests. <laughs> The three of your party members are right here, and you're looking for some lady you don't even know anymore. It's fucked up. You find Fira near the hull of the Mayfly with Adragon and Evata. They're assessing the damage to the ship. So it looks like we, well, obviously, we've lost the masts, and uh, the motor still seems to be okay here, but uh, we've got a lot of work to do to get this this wood fixed on the side of the ship and it doesn't look like there's been any structural damage and the cargo is still mostly intact. So, Oh, Agamir. Good. Good. Good to see you're awake. Yeah. Somehow that was. And alive, I guess. That was a heck of a storm. I haven't seen one like that in yeah, some years. And yeah, neither have I, not since uh, that uh, anomaly in the mirror sea back uh, a decade or so ago. I forgot. Oh, that's right. Totally bluffing it. Had way too many drinks in the last 10 years. But all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> no. Oh, you don't remember when the maelstrom opened up in the middle of the mirror sea? You know what? It's. It was just a mess. You couldn't get anywhere. You couldn't get over to Tor. You couldn't. You, you couldn't even go out and touch the water without getting rained on you don't remember that i think i must have repressed it <laughs> yeah it's a pretty big event <laughs> that's right but no i um you know what yeah the uh damage could be worse as i look at the ship i'm like anything i can do to help i want to get up and join this conversation by the way okay uh well how are your carpentry skills hmm Everyone. Not good. I'm good with mechanics. There's a reason I went into piloting the boats, not making them. <laughs> That's fair. Safina should be able to work on the motor. I feel like she should know how to fix it, or even if she doesn't, she's never seen it before, I feel like she could still fix it. Well, constructs are full of motors, so... See? I know exactly what a motor is. See? So she can do that. Oh my dear lord, are we going to keep calling it that? <laughs> well, they're filled with capacitors and circuits. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's Safina's like Safina, area. Safina, well, yeah, but I also I feel like Safina, just being an artificer in general, would know how to build shit, wouldn't she? Yeah. I feel like yeah. she can help with like crafting and building the boat. Make it bigger, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Harder, better, faster, stronger. We all come back. It's just shaped like a scorpion now. <laughs> <laughs> that runs across the sea. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> are artificers only good with like metal, or are they good with any any other kind of material? I would say anything, honestly. Anything mechanical could make electricity out of a potato. So. So if Safina does like the mechanics of the boat and stuff, and then Agamir and Fira could do more of the like sailing bits that. Uh, Safina would know about <laughs> the saily bits, you know. Mm-hmm. I also don't know about them, <laughs> which is why I call them the saily bits. I guess we need to like gather supplies then, right? Because sure, you're big and brawny, you can do that. Scar- <laughs> this is all in character for me. I'm <laughs> looking at Scar. <laughs> yeah. You're big. <laughs> go get stuff. You go get supplies that we'll need. I'm sure things like uh wood. I was like, are there, tr- there are trees on the island, right? Like regular trees? <laughs> yes, yeah. you see regular trees. Oh, you see fantasy trees, and you also see regular trees. <laughs> I kind of yell over my shoulder. I'm like, 
Anybody have an axe? Jeff the dwarf runs up. I found this in the wreckage. <laughs> very, very good, Jeff. I'm, I'm glad. Very good, Jeff. <laughs> I found this in the... <laughs> Perfect. He, he gives it a few swings in the air. <laughs> he makes that noise, too. Ever ever the enthusiast. Um, let's go, go ahead and grab a couple strong arm people and go try and collect some wood. Splitting the party? Is that what we're doing? Is Jeff a part of our party? I feel like it's all kind of... <laughs> wow, that was rude. Um, <laughs> I feel like we're on like a beach area. I feel like the the forest is like right there. If I'm remembering cartoons correctly of like <laughs> islands. <laughs> Anyone seen Lost? You don't go into the woods off the beach. No, we're not alone. going into the woods. You're just, there's a tree right there. Go chop it down. Like, it, it's like within eyeline. Like, you're not going into the woods. You're just right there. You're just walking like 20 feet and chopping that tree down. I just meant like, we should explore, shouldn't we? I, I want to go investigate one of the smokestacks or one of the smoke signals that we see on the island. Uh, yeah, that is uh, potentially a cause for concern because the Bulwark Isles are supposedly uninhabited. Yeah, that's why I was asking where we were because I want then if they were a part of, you know, if is there was there supposed to be civilization here? Why don't we just send Jeff to check in on it cause, since he's not part of our party? <laughs> <laughs> just send him in. Go knock on the door. So. I went ahead and rolled the history as well. I rolled a 19. So do I also recall that it's a bulwark, the Bulwark Isles? Yes. Oh, you, I feel uh, like we would have told you that. <laughs> based on the architecture and, you know, everything. It looking like ancient Ilar's birth ruins and judging the distance that you all had traveled. Uh, yeah, you would you would assume it's the, the Bulwark Isles as well. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but I want to go explore some ancient ruins, side quest style. I feel like that is a horrible idea, considering we just crash landed on this island, and uh, we don't know what's in there. And I think we need to make shelter. I think that we need to worry about the boat, and then we can go explore. Remembering what I remember about the Polar Isles, I, I agree with Drew on this, and um, I kind of raise my concern to the rest of the crew at large, and I'm like, I kind of point at the smokestacks. I'm like, I don't think there's supposed to be people. Let's get some defenses set up or something. Let's collect the wreckage that we can. What if they can help us? You're the most trusting person. You're such a cop. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Help us build this thing. What's wrong with you? Ord and uh, Sokoba are here too. Oh, I literally (laughs) forgot that they existed. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Yeah, they're here too. Is is Sokoba able to get up and walk around on her own yet? She is. It's been, you know, two days since she woke up. She's able to get up, but not for very long periods of time. And Ord is still on the mend from his, I think it's his left arm. He's still on the mend from his wound. Oh my god, I totally forgot about that. We should have had the cleric heal him too. Didn't we try? No. Oh, I can't heal him. I think I tried to heal him, remember? I don't. I don't even think so. Did I not try to heal Ord? No, because we're garbage and we keep <laughs> ignoring Ord. We keep ignoring the poor guy. <laughs> He's sitting in the sand next to Sokoba, and they're chatting. I'm I'm gonna walk over. I feel so bad that we forgot about them. I but I said on the that on the ship I was like curing wounds and stuff. I feel like I would have done that, but okay. Um, I walk over and I I kind of. I, I feel like Drew would be like a little embarrassed that she hasn't done this sooner. And so she just kind of walks over and pats Ord on the shoulder very gently and uses cure wounds on him. Oh, uh, hello, Drew. How how are you? Uh, I, I'm good. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> oh, I've been better. But, you know, it's... How does your arm feel? Why don't you try to move it around a little bit? It's still stiff. I don't know what it was in Kelvin's blade that made this so that it's so stiff and atrophied and it's just so hard to tend to, you know? It's it's really a pain. So it didn't... It appears your cure wounds had no influence on Ord's wound. Fantasy wound. It's a fantasy wound. <laughs> Except for not letting the canker do it. I feel yeah, I feel bad that. about that. 
Yeah. There was a lot going on. You all had a lot on your plates. It's fine. Okay, so we need to build a house. We can build like a a shaded structure for these two for sure. Yeah. It's the least we can do. (laughs) They can do repair tasks that require sitting down. Yeah. They can make nets and repair sails and the like. Yeah. Take inventory. Make some spears so we can go spear fishing. Yeah. Sure. So what would you all like to do first? I need to find a beach ball or volleyball so I can make it into a friend. Let's uh, go look at these ruins. We need to make some sort of shaded structure first. That is the first thing we need to do. Are you saying we already did that? Didn't we do that? For Ord and Sokoba? No. I would like... I, I would like... Agarir to try to rally a few people to go collect wreckage, stockpile up everything around the boat, and put up some basic, like, shelter for the wounded. And I don't know if we can really set up defenses like those wooden spiky things, but I have a a feeling if nightfall comes, we're going to need to all be kind of on our guard. Yeah, so uh, I have alarm the spell alarm. So if we set up the spiky things in a certain way, I can pinpoint an entrance at the spiky things. And if somebody enters it, an alarm goes off. Yep. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. So you all take a few hours and construct all of that up against the boat in such a way that it's up against one of the more structurally sound parts of the boat, we'll say so that you can concentrate on fixing the other parts of the boat. You take uh, some palm fronds and other various foliage and make a waterproof-ish roof. And uh, everything looks good. There's a a choke point. You've got the spiky things, as you call them. (laughs) All right. And uh, yeah, the alarm is set. So you all feel a little more protected. Awesome. Can I assign Yan the goblin to be the lookout? Up on the, like, I imagine, so the boat might have a higher point that looks out over this beach spreading out to the sides, right? Yes, it does. And uh, Yan says, yeah, I can help you out. I'll get up there. You know, I I just really like being up really tall. I think it's because I'm so short. (laughs) You know, that's why I was in the crow's nest earlier. But yeah, I'll go up there and I'm going to go look and see what I can see. And I'll let you know, huh? You're the guy, the, the goblin for the job. Yeah, yeah, you know it, right? That's what they always say. <laughs> they always say. That's that's the phrase. It is, yes. Yen scurries up to the highest point of the ship and starts looking out. Okay. I kind of walk up and I t- try to talk to the, like our core group of adventurers, Drew and Scar and Zaf. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys. So I'm fe- around what time is it right now? I don't know. You tell us. It is Look at looking the at the sun. <laughs> it's uh, mid afternoon. Yeah, I was uh, just the group. I'm like, all right, everybody. So it looks like we have a few more hours of daylight left. I can't believe this happened. I, I'm. I want to see what's going on at the smoke snacks. But what are you? What are you all thinking? I feel like we kind of need to figure out what we're up against if we're going to be here for a while. I think it is smart to do some reconnaissance. Okay. Maybe not go knock on their front door, but let's go check it out. Let's go look at the front door. Believe it or not, I can try to be sneaky. I'm I'm all about recon. <laughs> all right, you'll do your best. Um, anyone else want to come? <laughs> so we're going with my plan. I wanted to to go explore. Yeah, but we just needed to build the thing first, and now we did. We've got a home base. Yeah, I'd have a save point. Yep. A respawn point. Have you ever played a video game? I don't think there's a respawn in this game, though. Sure there is. It's a fantasy world. Should it be the four of us? Or or do we want to split the party and leave somebody back here? No, I want to go. No. Okay. We are leaving people back here. Jeff. (laughs) Yeah, hi. (laughs) Look, I'm the... Look, I got another tree. Uh, They're in good. They've got Ur and Adragon. Fred. Fred. Ruckle's probably crying because all the books got wet. Oh, Yeah. Sad. But yeah, no, I'm chill. Does uh, anyone want to go explore? Anyone with a better uh, stealth stat than Agamir want to come with us? I have 
the best stealth stuff. <laughs> I am the greatest. Listen, I'm the best stealther. I'm talking to Safina and Scar. <laughs> yeah, actually, I got a good stealth. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go. All right, so basically, yeah, let's go. I yell out to the um, to Fira and others, and I'm like, "Hey, we're like, hey, we're gonna go check out uh, check out those fires. We'll we'll be back before sundown, hopefully. Don't send anyone out after us." <laughs> that sounded like you were gonna murder us. <laughs> hey, 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 Agamir, I'll uh, I'll look out for you, huh? I'll look, I'll, I'll 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 keep looking. It's how I see you. I know you will, Dan. Yeah. I you almost called him Nathan. No. <laughs> you almost called him Nate. I think I was going to call him man. Uh, <laughs> man. But he's not. I know you will. He, you already forgot his name. Like, I know you will. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Bud. Pal. We'll see ya, you. Chief. <laughs> Chief. Yeah, I... So, yeah, let's walk into the forest. You all are walking, walking into the woods. Everyone roll me a survival check, please. What's survival? I rolled a natural 20. 19. 15. Five. <laughs> Agamir gets into the woods. And dies. No, and, and almost gets bitten by a snake, but <laughs> is able to get out of the way quick enough. Uh, snakes. Um, why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> you don't get those on boats. That's why he's a sailor. He just really hates snakes. So Drew is able to forge a path ahead um, through the forest rather quickly. And it's not even nighttime. You get to the edge of a clearing and you see some of the closest ruins to where the boat is. And... Around the ruins, you see a few campfires, and you also see a whole lot of lizard people. That's fun. Oy. What's a lizard people? Lizard folk. Lizard folk. Is that what their actual name is? Yeah, that's what they're called. They're a race. Lizard okay. folk. Lizard. That's what I meant. Is that the correct name of the race? Lizard folk. Yes. Are they evil? They're neutral. They're usually not great. They don't understand normal customs. So do we do we approach? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I roll for perception to I don't know, like just try and see what they're doing, see if I if I can hear them if they're speaking in their language or in common. Yes, you may. I want to roll perception too. That's 22. I also got a 22. So both Drew and Agamir are looking at the lizard folk around the ruins, and you do not recognize the language, and it appears that they are just going about their day-to-day -day lives. This looks like where they live. It doesn't look like they're doing anything malicious to the ruins. It looks like they're just kind of being. Cool. I don't want to, like, disturb them. Do I see any weapons or armor or shields or bows? Oh, uh, you're right. I should have mentioned uh, there are a lot of weapons. Uh, they are primitive, but there are a lot of weapons. Gotcha. Probably should have mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> forgot to say they're strapped. They're back in heat. They're all carrying. Um, <laughs> they all have. Uh, it, it's mostly bows and spears. There are a few like would look like bone swords and axes too, but... Do they have any, like, sort of lookouts and shit set up? None that you have seen. They would have seen us by now. I feel like they don't. If we're, le if we're here spying on them, they clearly, if they're there, we... they're not good. Yeah, well, how, that's what I was going to say. Like, how close are we to the clearing? There's no... I mean, you're close enough to see what's going on. The clearing's pretty tight up against the ruins and the forest line. So in order to see through the um, the foliage, you would have had to get pretty close. Do they have tails? Yes, they do. Cool. What do the ruins look like? It looks like if you took Ilar's birth and broke down a lot of the buildings, 
and then also left it in a forest for a really long time. It's all overgrown, <laughs> but you still see those really angular structures that, you know, Ilar's births uh, sports, uh, where everything is very uh, orderly and structured and everything has to be architecturally perfect. And this just does not look architecturally perfect, but looks like it used to be. It's going to be like one of these situations where someone's going to come up right behind us while we're watching them. Like in every other movie where people are scouting shit in a jungle or forest or whatever this is. Is it a jungle or is it a forest? It's a jungle. Okay, so it is tropical-ish. Tropical-ish. I'm going to roll a perception to see what's around us. That's a great job. That, okay. that, that's, <laughs> that, that's good. <laughs> I like that plan. That's a f- somebody else should probably do it because I'm. A, that's a five. You can't see the forest for the trees, or the jungle for the trees. I guess. Aww, sixteen. There are lots of trees that you have never seen before in this subtropical, tropical type island. Uh, there are lots of different bugs and critters, but you don't see any lizard folk around. Do we know? Are there are there lizard folk anywhere else in Ilari? They're here and there, but you don't hear about big congregations like this. They're kind of smattered throughout. Like you don't really get like a lizard folk town in Ilari. Yeah, they speak draconic, right? I mean, like, do well. I mean, can we just like approach and be like friendly? Or are they just going to automatically assume that we're going to hurt, try to hurt them? They speak draconic. They speak draconic. Thank you. Um, roll me an insight, Scar. Natural 20. Okay. Based on the other lizard folk that you have come into contact with in your tenure as a copper mantle, these seem to be a little more territorial and potentially a little more hostile. That's what I meant by inherently ragey. <laughs> hostile is the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, based on the the number of weapons they have and how you know how close knit everything is, it seems like the way that they have arranged their living situation is more of a using the ruins as a defensive structure, and they're trying to hold on to this. Okay, so approaching would probably be a bad idea. Yeah. We might want to report this back to the the rest of the crew. How, can I? Can we tell how many there are? Uh, they rolled a 22. I feel like they, you guys would have been able to count the numbers. Yeah, let me get a number for you. I'm wondering if like they're going to send out like any sort of scouting parties and they'll see our shit on the beach. If we light a fire at the beach... Yeah, we should probably avoid doing that if we can. Well, then we should get back to them before nightfall and make sure they don't do that. Of the the ones that you have seen out in the open, you counted around 20 or so. And there were other smokestacks in different directions than the one that we just came upon? Or mm-hmm. were all the smokestacks kind of coming from here? No, all of the, uh, the smoke trails were kind of dotted throughout the island and on the island there's also a small mountain on the northern side of it of the island you all are on the southern shore of the island and you can see a mountain up to the north so how close is this camp of lizard folk to our ship that is a great question i'm glad you asked (laughs) it would be less than a mile from where your ship is? Well, shit. I vote, we, we try and we report back to the crew to let them know there's 20 odd lizard folk under a mile from where we are and that we should avoid a fire. Hella, yeah, with hella <laughs> weapons. Yeah. Well, a lot of weapons. Cheap weapons. But lots of them. <laughs> Cheap weapons or not, they outnumber us a it's lot. It's about quantity, not quality, okay? Yeah, I'm just saying that hella weapons and yeah. numbers equal bad news bears. So Nate, <laughs> yes, at these ruins slash lizard folk camp, are does there seem to be anything mechanical or technological there? 
that is a perfect question. <laughs> Yay! Hey, you did D and D right. You get a star. I love stars. There, in the middle of the lizard folk camp, there's a, a statue that looks as though to your trained artificing eyes that it could move. However, it has not moved in many years, and it looks like the lizard folk have placed offerings at the base of it. Ooh. It's like C-3PO <laughs> with the Ewoks. <laughs> Would it be a perception, a history, an investigation to kind of determine what the statue is made of and what I can, what it would take to get it moving? It would be a history from this distance to see if you can figure out what exactly it is. Oh, yeah. Natural 20. That is a natural 20, indeed. Perfect. I love this. <laughs> okay. So, you study this statue for a while after recognizing that it might have some mechanical qualities to it. And you're you're looking it over and you're trying to determine what it is, racking your brain for knowledge. And all of a sudden, a light bulb goes off in your head. Bing! And... <laughs> You almost can't believe what you're thinking, but there's no other explanation. This must be one of the shield colossi of ancient lore. I'm sorry. The what? what? <laughs> the shield colossi. Everyone knows about them. Everyone thinks they're a story, but there's no other explanation for what you're looking at. How big is it? It's 15 to 20 feet tall. Whoa. Can you really call that a Colossus then? It's not that bad. But the Colossus of Rhodes was like hundreds of feet tall. You are correct. I'll just say it. <laughs> Is Colossi the actual plural of Colossus? Yes. It would not Coloss be Colossuses. I know. I was just what I didn't. I'm just saying. Colossus. Colossals? Like cacti. I've determined what it is. What would it take to get it moving? Or would nobody know that? You you can't tell. Up to this point, you thought they were just a story. Are we going to hear the story of the Colossus? <laughs> the Colossi? I feel like with Safina, um, Safina's about to get uh, real horny for that uh, mechanical <laughs> object. And I think we're about to hear the whole story of all the Colossuses the rest of the night until Colossus. she gets to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say Colossuses because Colossi isn't like. <laughs> All of the Colossuses. I love that word. I'm pretty sure we're not going to hear anything but that for the rest of the night now. Yeah. But now that she's got this freaking hard on for it, she's going to want to go touch it. Yeah, but she ain't <laughs> stupid. <laughs> That's how that works. I'm she's obviously... not Scar. She's not going to run in and just try to grab it. <laughs> I mean, I'm obviously going to take Agamir with me. So <laughs> I was going to say, like, this is going to be like a boo in, in the Cave of Wonders. Like, she needs to touch the shiny. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're right. We should probably stop. That's where we're going to end this week. <laughs> <laughs> Before uh, Saf gets too horny for these uh, <laughs> mechanical constructs. Yeah, that was that was great. You know, I'm glad that we're, I'm glad that we're done with the nautical portion for at least the time being, so I can do some more research. Uh, but anyway, thank you all <laughs> so much. That's why you crashed our ship. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the real reason. Thank you all so much for listening to the Village Idiots podcast this, this week. I had a great time DMing. I hope that you had a great time listening, and I hope that my players had a great time playing. Mm. This week's Village Idiot <laughs> is Brought going. To you by Brought to you by the letter. Uh, it would have been funny if I had known who the village idiot was going to be and say the first <laughs> letter. That I mean. Oh, come on. Isn't it obvious? Why? Because you tied your, you wanted to be <laughs> tied up to the front of a boat that capsized. Yeah. Not the front, the well, mast. Yeah, right. you're right. <laughs> yes, the village idiot this week is going to be Scar for wanting to be tied to the top of the mast while in a storm. <laughs> Uh, I was going for my Lieutenant Dan fantasy. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Everyone knows those sweet Lieutenant Dan fantasies. <laughs> I was trying to make the joke. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
everyone's intensive. <laughs> the first time I saw Forrest Gump, the only thing I wanted to do was to tie myself to the mast of a ship. Just like Lieutenant. During a raging storm, it looked like a lot of fun. Uh, he was just like flying around. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Fine. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast this week. Uh, Nicole, if they want to reach us on, on, on social media, they can do that, right? They, the listener. Yeah, the listeners can do that. We have a Twitter. It's at Village Idiot Pod. You can go there and talk to us. Uh, if you want to talk to us personally, like if you want to tell me that you also had Lieutenant Dan fantasies. <laughs> 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 you can find me at Nicole the Nerdy. <laughs> you can <laughs> You can find me at JRoma20. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Emily's dying. Emily's uh, otherwise detained. <laughs> oh this is a fantasy episode. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> You can find me at Neurotic Good. <laughs> Emily, is that you? <laughs> no, you said it's great. You can find me at Neurotic Good. <laughs> and you can find me at Village Idiots DM. And you can't find me because I'm too busy capsizing with my friends. So there you I go. you're going to say having fantasies about Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fantasy. Ice cream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we also have a website, uh, villageidiotspodcast.com. There's a ton of cool stuff up there, like the gold count for Agamir getting his own ship. You could probably just build him one on this fantasy island. There you go. You can see who's winning or losing with the Village Idiots tally. There are fun facts about the world of Lanamora, tons of artwork, and a link to our Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, want to hear more from your favorite idiots? Well, you're in luck because we've officially launched our Patreon. For just a couple bucks a month, you'll have exclusive access to some DM insights with Nathan and behind the screens. Listen to Nicole and I BS and What's What with Dilly and Dally, and even a mini prequel campaign set in the world of Lanamora. If a subscription to our Patreon is too much of a commitment for you, we'd love if you could leave us a quick review on iTunes. If you enjoyed the show, tell your friends about us. New episodes come out every Tuesday, so stay tuned. Yes, thank you so much for tuning in to the fantasy episode of the Village Idiots <laughs> podcast where we got all of our greatest fantasies to come true. <laughs> Tune in next week when we find out uh, what <laughs> Saf does to that statue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bye! 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 Bye. Laters! <laughs> <laughs>